This episode, we are taking a look at the Toshiba Satellite 4015 CDS. Up next on IJDM. Another visitor. Stay a while. Stay forever. Not a big story to tell on this laptop. I was visiting some family and my brother-in-law said, hey, I have this, do you want it? I'm thinking about just sending it to recycling or tossing it or whatever. I said, no, I'll take this little guy. Apparently I had turned it down years and years ago and he just never thought to offer it again. So this being sort of a retro channel, let's do some retro tech with this. Obviously it needs a, some cleaning and everything, but let's just give it a quick run through and see what we got here. We have a VGA port, parallel port, serial port, fan, IR port, and look at this, USB 1.0, oh yeah, can't beat that. Uh, we have a PS2 capable of mouse or keyboard or possibly both, maybe, maybe? Uh, port for your power. We have the power button on the side here. Uh, and looks like it says reset on it, but it's just so hard to read. It says reset, it's a reset, recessed button. Here we have an input or output, input, uh, input for audio, what? Hmm. Input for audio, we have microphone, line level of course, microphone and then headphones and a little control nozzle. Not, did I say not, am I doing a vacuum review? <laughs> Dial. <laughs> That's, oh man, it's been happening to me a lot Like, Got some indicator lights on here, hard drive, power, charging, whatever. Oh, look at this. This is very cool. I've had an IBM ThinkPad like this before, but uh, very cool to see the floppy drive and the uh, CD-ROM both in the same unit. We have our PCM CIA slot, two of them with, of course, a card in here. And it looks like a 10100 Ethernet card. We're missing the dongle, so uh, yeah, we'll just, toss that off to the side and unfortunately it's very hard finding those dongles. We have a lock here for the lock thing, jig thing. Taking a look at the bottom hard drive and this is where the battery uh, storage is. Yeah, and it looks like this is like a standard IBM battery that just kind of fits in this caddy. So this is kind of nice if, if you just want to take the battery out and not have the uh, missing lid part of it. So I probably will be losing this battery because I doubt it's got any juice left in it. And just some pre-test I did, uh, did on it while I was down uh, visiting, it doesn't even show, it shows the battery for a split second, then it shuts off. So I think it's dead, but you never know. Sometimes they pop back to life. This does have two uh, batteries for those little teeny coin cell batteries for a BIOS backup and some other kind of battery thingamajig, probably a standby feature. However, I am not going to rip this laptop apart yet. Maybe in another video, if people call for it, yeah, I wanna see this. But there's already a couple videos on YouTube about that whole thing and replacing the batteries. You basically take the whole case apart to get to them, which doesn't make any sense to me. Let's take a look at the inside of this thing and get this more into shot and there. We don't really need to see the screen yet, but we have our keyboard track, track, whoa, the point, man, this thing's like welded on here. Ah, we got that, oh, that thing's just, uh, I might have a few spare little guys laying around here. This needs some cleaning here. It's a little glazed over and the keyboard needs a good cleaning. It's been in storage for a while, so to be expected. And uh, got two speakers up here, of course your mouse buttons and your track point and the keyboard, which, in Toshiba sense, feels pretty dang good. I mean, for a laptop that's just standard rubber dome keys and, and all that. So that is this laptop in a nutshell. So first thing we're gonna do is power this baby on. I'm gonna get a part here, it's popping out, but that's okay, because we're gonna have to take it, disassemble it to clean it and make it all happy. And uh, okay, let's see if this thing is going to fire on. My guess is no. All right, we got some indicator lights and yeah, that noise is not, I don't think it's an actual beeping. I think that's the actual hard drive. So first thing we want to do, and I need to make an image and see if I got any extra drives laying around. First thing I want to do obviously is pull this hard drive off um, probably just toss it in some kind of e-waste thing or whatever. I mean, it's 
you're never going to be able to fix it. So that's that. And this hatch just unscrews like so. Take that and it kind of finagles out and there's the cage. So what I'm waiting for right now, or what I need to do right now is go ahead and I'm just going to copy an image from one of my other laptops from IBM that I did and just put it on a drive that's pretty much similar to this one. Maybe it's a little bit bigger. I think it's a 40 gig, but we'll just do a two gig partition just to keep it safe and compatible with DOS and all that funness and things. Okay. All right, we got the old drive here and we have the new one here. I'm gonna go with another spinner in here just cause I don't feel like ordering another card assembly and dealing with that on this one. I'm just gonna do a simple rebuild, kind of keeping quasi original equipment. And there's just four screws holding this sucker on. I just gotta be cognizant of how it sits in there because you want the pins and everything to line up. And I think if I just mount it straight up Let's see, is this drive upside? And you gotta be careful with this. Make sure it's the pins are the same. You'll have that one missing pin and then the, the other section of pins here off to the side. So it looks like we got a pretty much a match uses the same holes and everything. So that is a good thing. And the drive I'm pulling out of here, it says it's four gigs. So, wow, that is in there. That's not good. I don't know, my screwdriver's gonna be able to get that one screw out. I'm just going to do a little gorilla here and try to loosen it up a little bit. And it's not the best way to do it, but maybe we'll get it done. Uh oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, this screw is extremely tight and ticked off for some reason. So there we go. All right. I'm just going to toss that drive and. See if we can get this new one fit in as the doves are going off as usual. I mean, I could just throw the drive in there and use some double-sided tape or something, but uh, why not keep some of the, since we're kind of going original here, except you know, replacing the four gig with a 40 gig, four to 40 gig, but I, what I did is I partitioned it in two gigs of um, each section and did like two or three partitions, hoping to line up. Now that I put this back in, you can't really do it that way. You kind of got to go from the back to the front and then just kind of slide that in and it locks right in place. So now we have a hard drive. Now, interesting fact about this laptop. If I remember right, and I was having the same issue on testing it down there with using one of my boot disc is that it won't actually boot unless it has a functional hard drive. Don't ask me why or how, it's just something the way it's set up. So you actually have to have a drive functioning to use the floppy drive. Otherwise it just sits on that splash screen. Don't know if it's something with the BIOS or whatever, but I did update to the last BIOS available. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is what we do all the time here on, uh, not all the time, but sometimes on IJDM. I think, were you in focus? Shake it, Phil. You got it, you got it. Yeah, good enough, good enough, it's okay. It's IJDM, we just, you know, sometimes it is what it is. Let's see what that screen looks. We got a bad checksum, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's probably due to the, the battery thing going bad. Insert system disc and push. Oh, I didn't, I guess that didn't quite work the way I planned. Okay, while well, the drive's copying, and yeah, you're gonna have to wait till the end to uh, find out if it worked, yeah, along with me. But I do have the uh, drive installed, ready to go, so let's go ahead and give this thing, I'm just gonna use Windex on this. I mean, like I said, I'm not going full overboard on this cleaning thing, just because. And with that whole intro, long intro, while I'm cleaning, let's Go ahead and just kind of sit back and relax and do the cleaning montage fast forward thing I do. And there we go. Shows you what just a little Windex can do. And I know some people are screaming at the screen, screen, while I'm cleaning the screen <laughs> with Windex. Yes, I know what it does to screens and I should have used something else, but 
it's an all laptop. I'm not overly concerned about it. I only did it the one time. I'll probably clean it with the proper, you know, material cleaning stuff later. And as you can see, when I flipped it over, and again, I'm cleaning with a Windex just for you people. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, when I flipped it over, a bunch of gunk came out of the keyboard. So I'm gonna have to remove this keyboard to really get all the gunk out of there and kind of bang it around a little bit and blow it out real good. I don't think I really want at this stage pull every single key off and have to reattach it with these Tashi because it's a little weird. And if I didn't mention it earlier, this does use an external power brick, unlike uh, some of the other models of the era that, that um, did have an internal power supply, which I actually do prefer, but this one does not. So let's just get a little bit in between the hinges here. And there's no hinge cracks or anything. And I gotta say, I'll give it to my brother-in-law. This thing is, is, I mean, there's barely, it looks pristine. Barely any scratches. I mean, a little yellowing here and there, but I mean, other than just cleaning the keyboard and giving it a good scrubbing, that's really what it needed at this stage. And I'll get all the little small pieces and stuff some other time. But for now, especially for this video, we just wanna see this thing working and running at this stage, I'm sure. And one of my little disclaimers here, people, doesn't matter if it's an old device, new device, if it's your cell phone or your, your iPhone or your Android or any type of phone or product, keyboard, modern, old, vintage, you should clean them and sterilize them once in a while. If you'd be surprised that most of the germs you pick up are actually from keyboards, mice, and devices, and especially things you handle every day that you don't think to ever clean, like your keys, things like that, wall switches, All right, we are booting and hopefully the screen will settle down a little bit. And oh man, that screen is just looking, oh, wow. I still got a little goober right there. Uh, yeah, I can barely see that, but it did boot. We got a boot. What's it a boot? I don't know because I have a really hard time. If you're seeing what I'm seeing and you might see it a little bit better in the camera with the way the camera adjusts for things, I can barely read this. So I'm just gonna kind of let this sit for a little while and just kind of warm back up and see if this screen clears up with a little bit of time. So we will be back in just about one click. <laughs> And we're back, just like that. I left this just sitting, and as you can see, the screen came totally right back. I mean, it's still a little washed out, but I mean, not bad. You still want the setting all the way down, but I can read it perfectly fine now, so it just needed time to warm up and do its thing. Could be attributed to a multitude of things, but I'm guessing probably the, the whole um, caps thing and what's causing the weirdness, but I can barely see that. So let's get into some games and see what we got. But uh, yeah, we may need the mouse support, so let's enable that. And I just use the Logitech. And there's something missing here. I just noticed that. Uh, yeah, we gotta fix that right away. So I do have a couple extras from other restorers and laptops I've had to, I had to kind of let go over the years and this, that, and the other. This little blue guy looks like it'll fit nice in there, maybe. Oh no, well, it's pretty tight in there. These all come from different computers, so that one's okay, but it is like filthy, dirty, and nasty. Okay, well, oh, the, you know what? The ThinkPad one fit the best. Well, we're gonna go with the ThinkPad one for now. Yes, we know. Probably should have the OEM one, but I think the Toshibas are usually the harder color to find, but uh, yeah, now we got that in place. Now we're better. Kind of putting the cherry on top of the uh, sundae, so to speak. All right, let's find a game. So instead of doing the standard Duke Nukem 3D, let's just go into Duke Nukem 2 and try this laptop out. Something with a little movement, just to show you kind of what goes on with the DSTN screen. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look bad i mean it'd be better in a monitor obviously and i have laptops with all various issues of the screens between the caps and the side little you know connector things but uh 
this isn't bad really i mean it's totally usable in a pinch but if i'm on the go i could probably still use it and if i'm at home i could always hook it up to a monitor so yeah let's go ahead and uh, uh ooh, this this little arrow thing's a little gamey i think it's got some some grub in there let's see if we can figure out what fires and stuff okay yeah whoa um you see what i'm seeing look at them just blurs right out it's oh it's almost man i forgot what it was like on a dstn screen yeah moving games like this oof, i can almost barely make out what's going on unless i stop and it's just oh man if you lots of actions going on yeah okay I think it was jump. Yeah, that's how you do it. Okay. Yeah, well, that's Duke Nukem. Caffeine in sodas provides you energy. Well, new high score. Okay, well, on M. Is that an M? Really? Okay, whatever. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, it's missing something on an order form or whatever. No biggie. We don't care. Uh, I want to quit, yes, and this game is copyrighted, blah, 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 but now we're not going to distribute this game. So let's go back a directory and see what we can play. Uh, let's try, is it VP? I usually tell from the directory, but it's been a while. Let's see if this is the one I'm thinking of. Well, that did not work. It reset the computer and yeah, okay. <laughs> Nope. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. All right. A little SE2000. For those of you that uh, may have missed something or feel like there was a giant jump there, it's because I was trying to get the mouse enabled and I was trying to adjust the screen size and stuff. I may have cut that from the video. And in any case, it was just, it had just become a thing where I was just rambling on incoherently, which I do sometimes. Uh, so I just decided let's not even include this. Uh, I got a city loaded at for Tampa Bay and there it is. So I guess this is just not full size. There might be a way in the settings to increase the actual screen size of this game if I remember right, but I'm not remembering if it's the DOS version or the Windows version, but it uh, doesn't look like we have a city here. So let's go ahead and load another city that might be in here. Do we want to save Tampa Bay? Yeah. Let's go to Tokyo. Tokyo is pretty uh, built up. There's Tokyo. Okay, yeah. So we can move around and zoom in and see what the city has to offer. And I am having a heck of a time seeing that cursor whenever I move it. It's just, it just disappears. And then it's like, anybody that knows with these DSTN screens, it's just nearly impossible. Let's see if we can get this game bigger, though. Just for the heck of it and see if there's a setting I can use and... I'll see. It should be a setup file. Install boot ATI set. Let's try ATI set. That did absolutely nothing. Uh, v detect. Oh, I guess that's where I would go in and try to see if it. Uh, I don't have Super VGA, I don't think, but I don't know what the upper ones are. I can't read it. It went off the screen. Well, I thought there was a utility in SimCity, but we did have, I think, full screen for Duke Nukem. Let's just try one other game here. Whatever I see if the, off the top here, let's just try Wacky Wheels. Okay, so that's full screen. It's just the way that SimCity is configured or whatever. We won't fool around with that, but uh, there we go. Uh, wacky wheels. And again, this would probably be just a total mess of things once the, the action gets going here that, well, I thought this game was, yeah, that's the way I thought it was. <laughs> I was going to say, well, I didn't think it was top-down viewing. 
And it's not too bad. I mean, it's playable, but it, it's going to mess with your eyes after a while. And there's Wacky Wheels. Yeah, the Toshiba 415 CD. I think at this point in the video, we've done enough on it. I really don't have much more to comment on the video. Yes, you may be noticing that I have been doing this inside instead of at the standard outside bar thing I have. That's because it's about 100 degrees out with the heat index and real feel. So I would have been pouring sweat off my hands and getting this thing looking weird. So we decided to use the old counter today because I can stand and it's at my height and I don't you know, have to do a too much finagling. It works, but uh, that was the main point of the video was just showing you this, this laptop, getting it cleaned up and working again and trying out a few games on it. As far as moving games, like I said, no, not so much, but if you're doing something like a video poker kind of thing or card game, perfectly fine. Otherwise, yeah, I think I would stick to my other laptops. But the one thing I like about this thing is, and I've heard it called a battle station, a tank before, this thing does feel like it is built solid and sturdy. I mean, the hinge, no hinge crack, no nothing. So with that, we will call this video done. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.